Oh, it worked. Anthropic just launched a model with a 100,000 token context window. This is a 10x improvement in context window size and enables us to now feed entire books or any long document directly into the model and then ask complex questions about the input text. Most other language models at the moment can handle only between 2 to 8k tokens with a few exceptions, but 100k is unseen to this date, so this is an incredible step forward. So let me explain what this means and then I'll show you a cool demo. The context window refers to the total number of tokens an LLM can take in at inference time. A helpful rule of thumb is that 100 tokens correspond to around 75 words. So for example, if a model can handle 4096 tokens, you can feed around 3000 words into it. With Anthropic's new Claude model, you can now feed around 75,000 words into it. Let's put this in context. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein contains around 75,000 words, so the whole book fits into the model. This five hour long podcast contains 58,000 words. And about 65,000 words are spoken in eight Star Wars episodes. To consume and digest this content, it takes us humans many, many hours. Claude can do all of this in less than one minute. Here are some possible things you can do with it. For example, Claude can digest, summarize and explain technical documents like financial statements, legal contracts or research papers. You can also use it to ask questions and find answers in long documents without having to search. Just drop your documents into the context and ask what you are looking for. But it can do much more than summarization or simple Q&A. Because the whole document is in the context, Claude can respond with analysis or perform complex tasks that require synthesizing information across the entirety of your document. In my opinion, this is awesome. But I think instead of just talking about it, let's look at it in action. So let's look at a demo. And I want to try this out with a podcast episode from the Lex Friedman podcast. Podcast. And this is the episode with John Carmack, one of the founders of Doom and Quake. This is a pretty cool episode, which I highly recommend watching, but it is five hours long. So now I want to analyze this much quicker. And the first step is to get the transcript. So we get the text that we can then feed into the model. For this, we can use our assembly AI API. And I already created a lot of tutorials here on this channel how to do this. So I won't go into detail now, but basically here I have a helper function that sends two API requests, one to start the transcript and then one to get the transcript when it's completed. And then I will save this to a JSON file. And you could either upload a local file or if the file is already hosted somewhere, then you can use the URL directly, which is the case here. So you can get this from various places here. I'm using listen notes. So now let's run the code and get our transcript. And it worked and saved the file. So let's take a quick look. Here we get the text. The following is a conversation with John Carmack. So it worked. And as you can see, this is a very long file here. So it would take us a lot of time to consume this content. So the first thing I want to do is to tell Claude to give us a summary of this. So let's load our text again. And then first, let's get a rough estimation of how many words are in it by calling the dot split method. And then also by applying our rule of thumb to get the tokens. So as you can see, we have almost 58,000 words in it and 77,000 tokens. So this should fit into the model. And now to use Anthropics Cloud, we can use their Python SDK that we can install and then import. And then of course, we also need an API token and then we can set up a client. And then we call client completion and give it a prompt and also select a model. As you can see here, we use Claude version 1.3 and then the new one with the 100k context window. Then we also set the max tokens to sample and then we print response.completion. And now we need to specify our prompt. So let me copy and paste this here. So first we give a little bit of context. We say here is the transcript of a Lex Friedman podcast and then we dump the whole transcript in here. And then we say you're an expert at writing factual summaries, write a summary of the transcript in about 10 sentences. And then the assistant replies with I would be happy to help. Here's the summary. So let's run this and see what we get. And here we get our summary. So let's read it very quickly. John Carmack is a legendary programmer and game developer who co-founded ID Software. He is known for groundbreaking games like Wolfenstein 3D, Doom and Quake, which is correct. Then he started programming as a kid and quickly developed a passion for it. 
Then also he left Softest and started ID Software. Then they're talking about 3D graphics and this time at Oculus. Then also about AGI. So yeah, all of this is correct. So now that we know what the podcast is about, let's ask some specific questions about a few topics. So first let me copy and paste the same code in here. And now since I know that they are talking about programming, let's ask a question about this section. So let me ask, based on the transcript, what are some of Karmic's views on C++. Select one or two relevant quotations about C++ from the transcript and then explain Karmic's opinion. And by the way, we can also get rid of this. This is just to set the tone a little bit. So let's try this prompt. And here we get our response. So here are two relevant quotations from Karmic about C++. When I'm sitting down to do what I consider kind of serious programming, it's still in C++ and it's really kind of a C flavored C++ at that, where I'm not big into the modern template meta programming sort of things. And also he says that he spent a few years working with Lisp and Haskell. And then later here he says, and that changed a lot of the way I write my C++ code based on what I learned. And then the model concludes, based on these quotes, it seems Karmic values C++ for serious programming work, but prefers a simpler C-flavored style without heavy use of templates or object orientation. So I think this is really impressive. It answered a specific question about one of the topics in this long podcast. Now let's ask for something where the model has to look in different places of the podcast. So let me again copy and paste this. And now let's ask here, do they talk about what video games Carmack developed? And then let's say, if so, please list them here. So let's run this cell. And I made a small typo, but it didn't matter. So here we got our response. Yes, John Carmack discusses several video games that he developed in the conversation, and then it lists it as requested. Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, Quake, and Commander Keen. He also mentions other games that he was inspired by, like Super Mario Bros, Battlezone, or Star Wars The Arcade Game. And finally, he discusses some of the tools and technologies used to develop these games. So yeah, I think this is super helpful. So it even found some more information. So to me, this is very impressive. And I also have to give a shout out to our Assembly AI API, because the transcript was very accurate and worked perfectly together with Claude. So here are just two more cool ideas you can try out with it. For example, you could throw in entire documentation pages and then ask, please review these documents carefully and then provide a summary of a specific section in this case. Or you can uh, throw in entire long papers, for example, from Archive, and then ask, can you explain the section on XXX to me? Please briefly explain the background ideas and then explain the new contributions of this paper. So yeah, try this out on your own and let me know what you think. All right, hopefully this demo could give you an idea of what's possible with this 100K context window model. Now, if you've watched our last video about vector databases, I will drop this here. You might be wondering if this makes them unnecessary. Well, this large context window doesn't completely solve the problem. For longer contexts, or if you need to query over a collection of books or transcripts, for example, you'd still need additional workarounds to store the data. But if your data fits into the context window, this new model indeed helps to avoid spinning up custom vector databases. To me, this is an incredible step forward and I think you just gotta try it yourself and play around with the model to get a feeling for what this enables. So let me know in the comments what you think about it. So if you wanna try it out and learn more, then check out Anthropic's blog post about it. Also, if you want to easily combine this with audio or video data, then check out our Assembly AI API. Both links will be in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed this video and then I hope to see you next time. Bye.